Hi, welcome to our facial demonstration with 2L Skin Care by Eva's Aesthetics. I'm Lauren Astori, president of Eva's Aesthetics and daughter of said Eva, who uh, started manufacturing the skincare line 30 years ago. I'm very happy to bring to you this demonstration. It is geared toward teaching you how to use the products correctly in what order for a successful facial treatment. So welcome and let's get started. Time to do the facial. Now my lovely model arrived without any makeup, but I'm still going to go through the process of how to remove the eye makeup and lipstick, do the surface cleansing, and then move into the deep pore cleansing. In the 2L facial, we break down our facial in four distinct segments, and each segment has its own goal. And the first goal is the deep pore cleansing, which is surface cleanse, deep pore cleanse. So I'm going to move right into the eye and lip makeup removal. I'm going to take a little bit of cotton and just squeeze the excess water out so it's not dripping. And I am going to use what is actually step one of the deep pore cleansing process, but it's the cleansing oil. And cleansing oils do a fantastic job of removing eye makeup and lipstick. And I know that there are different schools of thought about leaving eye makeup, but if you're going to do a really great facial, you need to do an eye treatment at the same time. So you notice I put my hand down before I touched her with the cotton with the product on it. If you have a client that has uh, waterproof mascara, you actually want to put a little bit of cleansing oil on and let it soak for just a second or two, and it will help start to break down that mascara. The cool thing about the cleansing oils is that they're really awesome for the eyelashes. So you get to condition your eyelashes while you are removing your makeup all in one fell swoop. Okay, moving on to surface cleansing. And we are using uh, a cleansing milk, and you'll use either a cleansing milk or a cleansing gel for a surface cleansing makeup removal. In the morning, this is what the client uses in the morning, but I'm only going to do my client's face, not neck and decollete. So you don't need to go into neck and decollete when you are doing surface cleansing and makeup removal, because not too many people actually wear the foundation all the way down their neck and decollete. Of course, if they did, then you would do this right there. Very brief. You don't have to go very deeply into it because again, you are just literally doing makeup removal. I use my facial sponges and throughout the facial, I am going to use one set of facial sponges and then one barber wrap. But for the barber wrap, I use a diaper or those really super inexpensive cotton cloths that you can get uh, in the kitchen department. Okay, foundation's off. Now before I go uh, into the deep pore cleansing, I'm actually going to dry her face. The deep pore cleansers with 2L are cleansing oils. And in order for a cleansing oil to do its job, you have to put it on skin that is not wet at all. And the reason that this has to happen is that a cleansing oil is actually going to marry and bond with the dead skin on the surface, the sebaceous oil that a client that we excrete, and any debris of the day. And if you have water on the face, then you actually have a barrier in between the cleanser and the debris that you're trying to remove. So move into step one. And now I am going to go all the way. Face, neck, and decollete, and shoulders. And we do, the way I teach a facial and the way I do a facial is I do actually go all the way down and do around the shoulders and up the back of the neck. I don't just concentrate on the face and the neck. And I'm sure you can see that this looks very oily. That's because it is an amazingly refined oil. 
And the way that we have structured our cleansers is that we have cleansing oils for six different types of skin. Now this instructional tutorial that I'm doing for you is not really product knowledge and busting out all the different products that we have for all the different skin types and conditions. It is to teach you how to use the products to do a facial correctly with the line. Interesting thing about cleansing oils, they cannot really be duplicated in any other way, through any other line, any other style. They clean the skin in a way that no milk or foaming gel could ever possibly do it. Once your client gets the hang of it, their skin really changes. And I remember over the years working with my mother, one of the things I used to tell her when I was much younger was I don't understand how could I tell somebody that already has beautiful skin that they should use a two-step cleansing system or even buy really nice skincare. And she said, again, this is a long time ago, because even people with beautiful skin can actually have improvements. So when you talk with beautiful skin improving, imagine what it would do to skin that has a lot of dead skin buildup or is oily. It's amazing. All right, this is step one of deep pore cleansing. Now I'm moving into step two, and this is our herbal toner. And what an herbal toner is, is actually sugar complexes. And we know what sugar com we know what sugar does when it rains, when it gets moisture in the air, it's, it's a humectant. So if you can see, it instantly changed how the cleanser looked. And what the herbal toner does is it makes the cleansing oil water soluble. And you can also tell that I'm spending quite a few minutes on the cleansing process. In the 2L line and how we at Eva's Aesthetics have always felt that if you do a really great cleansing with a cleansing oil and an herbal toner, that you have set the stage for everything else you are going to do, whether it's at home or at the salon, that all of those amazing serums and masks and treatments that we have that are so great with all the cosmetic chemistry going on, if you're putting on improperly prepared skin, then it's not nearly as effective as it is when you've done such a great job with the cleansing oil. So I've worked it. And now I'm going to start a section that is very different from every other line that I've seen. And it involves a lot of water. So you have to learn how to start adding water without making your client feel like you are drowning them. <laughs> I guess that's the only way I can say it. But you see what happens? It instantly changes the way the product looks and feels. Now I am adding water until it feels like skin as opposed to oil. And here's, here's the interesting part of cleansing oil herbal toners. When you get to the point where your client is using the cleansing oils at home, which this particular client who is also a professional esthetician does, it only takes two to three additions of water to the point where you're at skin, as opposed to it feeling like oil. When you have a client that hasn't used the cleansing oils yet, you might have to add water eight or 10 times before you actually get to the point where it feels like skin. And until you get there, the cleansing oil process and what the products are capable of doing has not been accomplished. So at the beginning, when you're learning how to use the line, be okay with it taking a little while. Don't rush this process. Also from here, when your client starts using the products at home, after you've done the initial cleanse like you have at the facial part, it will only take them a one, two, three, and they're done cleansing at home. They don't have to go through that whole process of adding water until it feels like skin because you will have immediately gotten rid of that dead skin buildup that is what you're breaking through with the cleansers. So you notice I'm 
now into the barber wrap. So I did the initial cleanse with the sponge and then I used my lovely diaper or barber wrap. Again, they're just softer than Terry of any kind. And that is the deep pore cleansing. Surface cleanse with a cleansing milk or gel and then deep pore cleansing with step one, the addition of herbal toner, step two. Nice massage and then you add water and now the skin is seriously prepared for the next phases of our treatment. All right, time to move into stage two, which is refine. Stage one is cleanse, stage two is refine. And refine means exfoliate and extract. So I'm going to reach over and turn on my steamer because it's time and this is also when we bring in a little bit of relaxation and eye treatment. So I'm taking one of my eye products, and we've got three different eye products, and I just decide which one I want to use at that moment. I might use two different ones because you're also going to put it on at the end of the treatment. Now, a lot of times I have seen when people put on eye products that they're so careful about where they put them on. You know, they dot above and they dot below. Go over that eyelid and go directly around the eyes. Don't be so absolutely careful. I know the concept is, well, it will go to the skin of the eyes, but just put it directly on. And then I put some on the lips as well. And then I take our relaxing botanical booster. You know, I say throughout my life and when I'm using different products. This is one of my favorite products. But I guess when it comes down to it, they're all my favorite products. But I do love our botanical boosters. This one is designed to promote lymph lymphatic drainage and relaxation. So I'm just going to put this directly on the neck and decollete. It smells delicious as all of our botanical boosters do. And that just goes down there. I will use one specifically for her skin type later on after I've done all of the cleansing. So I have my exfoliation products right here, and it's a combination of our enzyme and our power scrub. We have three different, my steamer's ready, so I'm just going to pull it on over and start steaming. There we go. We have four different styles of exfoliation products, two chemical, one mechanical, and our enzyme, which theoretically is a chemical as well. And I like mixing and matching. I've always done that. You can use any of them individually and you can do any combination. My suggestion while you're learning the line, naturally is to follow the written instructions, but that you also go into uh, learning it, what each product does individually before you become your own little home chemist. If you understand what each product does, then you will know how to blend for the maximum result. Uh, let me get my sponges, one second. Okay, so when you are adding water, you literally just drip a little bit of water from the sponge. And this is warm water and then you mix that way. You know, any time that you start squeezing that sponge, you are going to get too much water. So if you just go over and drip without squeezing, do a little bit at a time, then you'll get just the perfect consistency. Warm it up just a tad under the steamer and then start applying. There are lots of different ways that we can do exfoliation. You can use a machine, you know, brush rotation or the Clarisonic style of machines, doesn't really matter. You're just looking at exfoliating the skin and what can that skin benefit from and tolerate. So get the product on. And again, stage two, refine. We have done our deep pore cleansing. Now we're into refine. And the Power Scrub is an interesting product. It is just a simple scrub and it seems like, 
Well, it couldn't be that big of a deal. But I will tell you, when you learn how to use the power scrub, super fine particulated product, and you know the smoother you want something, the finer the sandpaper has to be, that there are so many different ways that you can use that power scrub from very, very mild to very, very strong. We don't recommend teaching your clients how to do it at home in the super strong way because clients do have a tendency of not knowing how much their skin can tolerate like we do. But it's just a matter of learning what your product can do and then making your professional judgment on what the client's skin can tolerate. Now you notice I'm not being too careful about avoiding her lips. It is completely okay to exfoliate the mouth as well. We don't want to be... There's something that we're taught about being so careful and then we go home and we just pound on our own face. We can actually do that to the client as well, making sure that you get every last little bit of the face, neck, and decollete in exactly the same way that we do at home. We exfoliate depending on, the time we exfoliate is dependent upon and how thick the skin is. So in all of our instructions, we say exfoliate for two to 10 minutes, depending on the thickness of the skin. Now this is not, this instructional is not to teach you how to analyze skin. You'll learn that either at one of our classes or through the book or through me coming and working with you chairside and teaching you how to analyze skin. But skin ultimately has a certain level that it can or should or wants to be exfoliated. And there was, if you've been in the business for a long time, you know there was a time when we just exfoliated the skin till it was irritated thinking that we were doing good things for it. And then of course we found out we weren't. We were actually irritating it. So I like to make sure that I don't exfoliate the skin to the point of irritation on a regular basis. Now, when that changes, is when we're doing a chemical peel and our goal is to actually say burn the skin but do an aggressive exfoliation a couple times a year or in a series to actually achieve faster cellular turnover but not all the time not on a regular basis one of the things about the power scrub that I have found is that as you are learning how to work with it you will find that it's a little challenging to get it all off. So as you're learning, you'll go through and you'll run your hands over and you can feel a little more product. And when, you're, when you do, just go and get your sponges and go ahead and go over the area again. When you are removing a product, don't squeeze your sponges or your towel out absolutely dry leave a little bit of water on them so that it picks up the product better when you're actually removing it. All right, that is exfoliation. I'm going to move into the extraction or the disincrustation. You must admit it's our favorite part. I know at the beginning where I'll say ew, and then we totally get into it. We can't help it. I have my third bowl of water up here. It's really hot. What I do is I have my final mask, my final bowl of water, and I'm going to use this super hot water to massage with, but I also am floating the mask in that bowl. So if you can see, I actually have this nice hot bowl of water and I have my little pre-made, I haven't added the water to it yet and I float it in my bowl. It's the coolest thing. That means when you put that mask on at the end of your lovely massage, it's warm and cozy and feels rich and luxurious. It's really, really one of those tiny little things that is great to learn how to do. Now, moving into extraction, we have a pre and a post extraction solution. So I'm going to get, every time I actually use cotton or I get any of it wet, I always squeeze out the excess so it doesn't get all crumpled up 
but it's not dripping. And now I'm going to add some of the pre-extraction solution to it. Sodium borate ultimately helps take congestion and make it softer. Depends on where you are extracting what a client comes to you with and what they need. The nose is one of those obvious first places we go. But if somebody has congestion on their forehead or they have full-blown acne, then you will just simply cover their entire face. If you are doing galvanic current, you would do galvanic current negative right now over this solution. And because I also extract with a uh, mag lamp, I'm going to go ahead and put an iPad over. For the sake of this instructional, I am not using a magnifying lamp. Plus my client doesn't have a pore that we could find, let alone a little bit of congestion in any of those pores. Nevertheless, you do go ahead and cover their eyes and you would take three to five minutes on this stage. So if you're using galvanic, use galvanic. If you don't have steam, then you get a barber towel with fairly warm water and you wrap it and you let it heat up because heat, we know, softens the skin and then also helps with the uh, pre-extraction solution to actually help liquefy congestion so it takes a whole lot less pressure on the actual skin when you are extracting. I use an extractor when I am uh, doing extraction. Now one of the things, there's two ends but I actually never use this end, it's the little loop. The other thing is this flat non-sharp extractor even though it has a hole in the center I don't try and get the congestion to come through the hole. I actually use the edge because it is not sharp. It won't tear into the client's skin. So I have gloves on. I wrap my finger with cotton so that you can not slip off of the skin. And when you are extracting, the goal is to create tension with your fingers and then just simply press into and towards your fingers. So I am right here and right here pressing the skin to create tension so that I have very little pressure that I need to create. And even though my client has dry skin as a skin type, you can see there's still a little bit of congestion and I have a piece of cotton down that I'm going to wipe off anything that actually needs to be wiped off the extractor. So, again, get this little piece of cotton out of the way so you can see a little better. But the cotton is great because it helps you really hold on to the skin. Make the pressure with your fingertips not with this, you don't dig into the skin with this. You make your pressure. Never that. That's actually too much pressure too deep into the skin. If you've got somewhere on the cheek that you're working on, sometimes, and it depends on how thick the skin is, that you might actually put the extractor down and come from way under it to get at that congestion. Understand that you need to get at the base of whatever it is you're extracting. You don't want to go to the top or the middle of it at all. So when you're creating your pressure, whether it's here or on the forehead, something sometimes on the forehead, I have found that I can just put that extractor down and kind of move the skin over it. And because the, you know, the bone is there it kind of bases it so you don't have to actually try and pick up the skin on the forehead the goal again is that you extract as much as you can with the least amount of discomfort to your customer and for me i don't actually care how much congestion somebody has in their skin i am not going to spend 10 15 20 minutes extracting 
in emotionally and physically the client can't tolerate it and even if you're doing an acne treatment you really need to keep a fixed amount of time that you are going to spend on this treatment you're not going to extract 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 the client can't tolerate it nor should you expect to actually get absolutely everything out in one fell swoop what you're going to do if you're working on for example acne or super congested skin is you're more going to have the client come in every week or and book them in a series so that you can do extractions a little bit six eight minutes at a time more frequently than one fell swoop the other part is of course as they are moving into using products at home that that congestion will not be reappearing so i have done extraction i'm going to remove the ipad and now i'm going to put on my post extraction solution and this is hamamelius or witch hazel in its most beautiful form not in an alcohol base but this will help basically just add that little extra layer of disinfectant or germicide to the area that you just extracted off with the gloves and now botanical booster I'm ready to turn off my steamer and actually had I been working with the mag lamp, it would have reminded me to turn off the steamer because you know you can't work with a mag lamp and a steamer. But ultimately, I'm going to steam from the time I start the eye treatment and relaxing botanical booster all the way through extraction, all the way through exfoliation up to extraction. The skin is as clean as it possibly can be right now. And this is when you're going to put on your botanical booster. Uh, it's one of my favorite things. Yes, I know. I already said that. I know. I know. But I love botanical boosters. We have, they're 25% pure in a base. And it depends on what skin type they're formulated for is what base and what plant extracts or essential oils are actually in them. And they're old school. I mean, they are truly ancient in their technology. But there is something about pure plant extracts that no amount of scientific newfangled and I love all the new science I love all the cosmetic chemistry I love what we can do but man nothing can take the place of a botanical booster especially a really strong one and it's funny when you think 25% that's really strong most botanical boosters are or essential oils are more like three or four or five percent so our professionals are 25 percent in a base the uh, retail ones are 15 percent in a base so we have cleaned we have we have done the stage one cleansing we have done stage two which is exfoliate extract and now we are moving into nourish we actually start the nourish phase or stage with the botanical booster so let me get my massage products ready and i'll be back for the massage all right it's time to move into phase three phase one or stage one is cleanse makeup removal surface cleanse deep pore cleanse phase two refine which is extract exfoliate and then extract you know all of the different products come into play as this is going on now we're moving into phase three which is nourish and nourish is accomplished with a couple different things one is the botanical booster which i've already applied and it's my favorite thing yes again i talk about it my favorite thing and now we're going to move into massage so i am massaging with first a layer of hydrate hydrate is our number one product we've we started match, manufacturing this sodium hyaluronate and now we're into sodium hyaluronate cross polymer which simply means that the more we get into the ability to refine molecules and make them lighter in weight thus smaller thus a stronger humectant uh, but hydrate was born in our company about 
20 years ago, I think we were the first company to bring in a sodium hyaluronate into a gel. And it immediately became our number one selling product. And today it is still our number one selling product. We put a layer down and now what I'm going to use to massage with is the cream that is actually correct for my client's skin type. We don't use, my hands of course are oily, we don't use a um, non-discriminant or indiscriminate massage oil. We use the cream that is correct for that skin. So I'm working on dry skin and I'm going to use the Moisture Plus cream. It's an interesting way to get used to doing massage. Uh, if you're used to using just an oil, it will be somewhat challenging as you move on to learn how to do this. But what I want to show you is not my massage techniques. Everybody has their own massage techniques. And what I'm going to assume is that you make sure that you do the decollete, the neck, the chin, the mouth, above and below the lips, the nose and eyes, and all of those little bitty body parts, but that when we are learning how to massage with hydrate and a cream, you will run out of slip. It's different than using just an oil, a massage oil to massage with. So as you are actually massaging, and if you need to add slip, you're going to pick up just one hand, dip it into this bowl of water, and add a little bit of water to the skin. If you are in an area where you're using both hands, then you can actually pick up some water, come on over, and add it, and the other hand will pick it up just like that. It is, uh, really great for the skin. And that's always going to be our job. And our thought process is do what is best for the skin. So again, when I am doing massage, I have a tendency to always do neck and decollete first. However your method is, whether you start at the forehead and work your way down, just make sure that when you are working, that when you do need to add slip, you don't pick both of your hands up off the face and go and get them both wet, but that you dip a little bit in and that you add it and your other hand will pick it up like that. So I'm just again going to go through a little bit of massage. This is all going to be what you like to do for massage. We all have our different things that we like to do. And I find massage, if I just kind of let my brain go, that I make sure that I cover the entire face and that your fingers will ultimately go to where the client keeps their tension. Naturally, a lot of people keep it in their shoulders and neck. We spend our whole lives being tense. So that's why I like to start on the uh, shoulders and neck. And when it comes to anti-aging, Every time I get a treatment that's supposed to be anti-aging and they ignore my neck, I think if you don't start working on my neck, I am not going to feel like I had an anti-aging treatment. Because let's face it, our neck and our hands are one of the places that show age almost more than anywhere else. A lot of different movements that you can do around the eyes. I There's something about eyes that I really like working on. If they wear contacts, you can't necessarily do this type of movement. but pressure and pinching on the eyelids is super relaxing and anytime you're doing any kind of massage you are also helping ensure that you are breaking up congestion even though we've already cleaned out the skin it's always good to work on the skin so that's it just go through a little bit again where you add water to one hand to do massage to get some more slip and what this means when you work like this as opposed to with a cleansing uh, excuse me with a massage oil is that when it comes time to put on your final mask you don't have anything that you have to remove because what you've been using has been perfect for the skin 
which is again why we say it's such a great way to do it. it, it it's challenging if you haven't ever. Just make sure you don't do this. Don't do that. You wanna do this. Got it? Don't remove both of your hands. Just remove one. You only need a little bit of cream over the hydrate and you will have beautiful slip all through your massage that is absolutely perfect for the skin as well. Okay, I finished the massage and the final part of phase three, which is nourish, is the final mask. So I've been floating my mask in my super hot water that I also dipped my fingertips in during the massage. And just like when I was doing the exfoliation combination, you just kind of dribble a little bit of water. And for my final mask on my model, I have a mixture of our desert clay and moisture plus she has dry skin as a skin type. And I just love, <laughs> I've said this the entire time, I love that desert clay mask. It's one of my favorite things. But it's, it's the only clay I've ever met that actually doesn't dehydrate. Most clays, while they remineralize and they're great for the skin, the desert clay does not dehydrate. It actually hydrates the skin as it remineralizes. And I like to use it as a base for uh, a lot of my masks. So because I was floating it in the water, it's warm. You know, nothing is worse than doing this lovely relaxing massage and then putting a cold freaking mask on your client you don't want to do that so go ahead and float it and use warm water to apply it um, when it comes down to the final mask you're talking 10 minutes the mask is going to stay on them for 10 minutes and Everybody has their own style of what they like to do when the final mask is on. Some of you don't like to leave the client. So you'll do a hand or a foot or leg massage or something like that. Personally, I actually leave the client, take the notes, go into the next room and make my notes on the service and the treatment and what do I recommend and what do I think at that time. I also find that if I leave the client, and I'm gonna do something that, I don't know why I started doing it, but I've always done this, and for some reason it really relaxes the client. So I'm going to take the iPad that I used. It's freshly warmed, and then I take a little bit of the extra mask, and I just, I call it glue it down. It seems like such a silly little thing, but there's, the client can't flutter it off with their eyelids. And when you, it's almost like secure. So when you put it over their mask and then you use just a little bit of the extra mask to secure that iPad and I leave them now, so I make sure they're cozy and they're warm enough and I leave them now, close the door. I have found that this is when the client goes into their deepest relaxation. This is when they will go to sleep if they haven't, not, you know, m many clients don't just automatically go to sleep, but for even your highest stress customer, this setup and leaving them alone is when I have found that they go into their deepest relaxation. So for me, I leave them shut the door, make sure they're cozy, and I go out and make my notes, pull what products I want them to take home that day, and give them seven to 10 minutes all alone by themselves. All right, the mask has done its job, and now we're going to go ahead and remove. So take off the iPads, and I do use the diaper wrap to remove the bulk of the mask. I use it two times, once for the exfoliation and then once for the mask and I know I'm repeating myself occasionally but if you leave it so that it's not dripping but not completely 
squeezed out, you'll have, it'll be easier to remove the product. Take the sponges, do neck and decollete, get a little bit of the excess off, and then go ahead. And I put my hands through and then I start. And because it's so thin, you know, that's what I like about these instead of Terry. It's such thin material that you can get super right into the eyes and it's soft. A diaper is soft and absorbent as it's supposed to be for babies, but after all. So they're much softer than Terry uh, towels are. But you can get some really good detail work done. All right, make sure you get most of the mask off here and then I will detail with the sponges. When you get the hang of it, you actually end up with very little detail that you need to do. But um, these sponges, I just throw in the laundry with my towels because they're super porous. They get completely cleaned. So you don't have to throw them away, nor do you give them to your customer. I reuse them. They're washable just like our towels are. All right, final, final phase. We've cleansed, we've refined, we've nourished, and finishing now begins with mask removal. So a couple of different products. We're always going to put on products, the leave-on products according to thickness of product or viscosity. Uh, so you go thin to thick. That's just how it goes on anything, hair, skin, body, face, it doesn't matter, thin to thick. So we're always going to put our serums on first, and this is C Power. It is a stabilized vitamin C. It's our second biggest product, also one of my favorites, in case you didn't know that. Uh, vitamin C is just amazing for the skin. It helps the skin stabilize the pigment, the melanin production, and it's a just an all-round anti-aging product. I put that on everybody regardless of their skin type or their age. Next is a little bit of the hydrate. Now I'm not going to use as much as I did when, it kind of, when I was doing the massage. But I put the serums on and then I'm going to put the eye products on. And the reason I do it in that order is I'm going to finish with either sun care for day or night cream for evening if it's dark outside. And I like to give the serums just a few minutes to soak in and evaporate. Um, I said earlier, we have three different eye products and I use different ones for different reasons. And often I don't use the same one at the beginning that I did at the end. So at this point I used eye corrector. As you can see, it's a gel instead of a cream. It just depends on what you're trying to accomplish with your client. And I always put my eye products on their lips as well. And as you can see, and as I said at the very beginning, go directly around their eyes. Don't put it above and below. It's an eye product. Put it on the eyelids. And then I'm going to use Daily Protect, and we have different formulations for different reasons. You start with skin type and then climate, but you're always going to finish during the day with some kind of sun care, and it should be appropriate for the skin, obviously, and I mean appropriate by that, I mean formulation appropriate. You know, it's amazing how many times I know that you've heard this a lot if you're already an esthetician and working. How many times we have clients say that they use sun care only when they go out. And the reality is we actually need to use sun care as our final product regardless of what you're going to do during the day. Especially somebody that's working on pigment problems or hyperpigmentation or spots of any kind. But when it comes down to it, uh, sun protection should ultimately be the last thing you put on before you put your makeup on if you wear makeup. So that is it. I gave the serums enough time to soak in, put on the eye product, put on the sun care, and then I just kind of press a little bit. 
it helps it penetrate and dry and we are finished with our customized 2L facial. Remember four phases, cleanse, refine, nourish, and finish. Always work with a thought process of what does this client want to accomplish for their skin? At what stage is their skin? And what can their skin tolerate or what would benefit it? So I welcome you to the world of 2Well and our fantastic products. And I look forward to working with you. All right, I hope you learned a lot from that facial demonstration. There's a couple of things to go through. Learn your products, use your workbook, access the tech support, both email and calling us so that you really do understand how the products work so you are successful using the line. I look forward to working with you and I wish you all of the best of success in this beautiful world that we get to work in.